So without further ado, can I welcome Blake Ewing to be in our first presentation for today? Uh, thanks thanks uh, to all of you for coming. Um, I want to add another question to what Stuart posed. Um, and his question of why academics should blog is, is a good one. And the other question that we were trying to answer of Politics Inspires is, should the department itself host that blog? And that was, that's a question that um, I'm not sure is still, uh, is still answered to a satisfactory conclusion. And I'll get into that in my presentation, but it's something, it's a theme that that I recurred to us that I think uh, I'd like to explore more today. And I think this happened in, there are two main <coughs> circumstances in which politics and spires came about. And the first one is that there is a rise in academic bloggers, uh, and that's become very popular. And there are a few departments, particularly at Nottingham, where there are a group of academics that are active bloggers themselves, and they are blogging through, uh, through their own uh, website and their department. Um, and there are a few Oxford academics that are also blogging. And the second circumstance is, of course, one that you're all familiar with, which is the pressure on academic departments to stay, quote unquote, relevant uh, to the general conversation, particularly in public policy. And we wanted to see if the blog was a way for the Department of Politics and International Relations to try and improve its relevance in some way. Um, and I think um, we do that in two ways. I mean, one, it's a, a knowledge platform that is internal in the sense that it gives graduate students and academics here a chance to share what they're doing with, with colleagues and <coughs> potentially engage with others through corresponding blog posts or Q&A or that the blog was a way to condense our academic research in a more digestible, perhaps, uh, and shortened version that will stimulate conversation. And the second uh, platform is to, to showcase what we're doing to a wider audience. To, to outside school groups, to people in public policy, to people that are funding universities. Uh, so so there, there's a mix of audiences, which is both an opportunity and has also been, perhaps there's been a tension there as to who our core audience really is. Uh, we inherited Politics Inspires from um, the, the IT side of Oxford. They ran a project called Triton, which was a, an open knowledge <coughs> outreach effort. And they, they built the blog for us then their funding ended and they handed it over. And to the department's great credit, um, a number of the administrators there cobbled together some money to say we want to fund uh, a couple of graduate editors, including a few other people, and, and try and, um, and then get more money subsequently to, to see how we can develop this. And, and I think it's really due to the department uh, that we still have apologies inspired. But the original intention and the reason it's inspiring is because it was geared towards uh, uh, school uh, school children that interested perhaps in doing politics at the university level. Um, so when I took over, it was a rather sleepy operation in many ways, I mean, the readership was quite low. But it was really a laboratory for opportunity. I wanted to see what types of blogs do we want more graduate students, do we want people to repost their blogs, do we want ebooks? And some things have worked and some things some things haven't, uh, but I think there's quite a few lessons learned uh, from our experience that uh, others can find valuable, and I'll get to those in just a few minutes. Um, the things that we've tried, one question was, do we want outside contributors, which the LSE has done quite effectively, or do we want to focus more on what's going on in departments? And quite frankly, a lot, because they were doing what they're doing so well, I thought, well, this is an opportunity for us to see if we can focus internally. And um, there have been a number of academics who have have done that, but they haven't. They haven't contributed uh, regularly. There's not a, a regular academic blogger who uses our platform to uh, to blog. They tend to use their own blogs. <coughs> the second problem we have is that we don't have a particular theme uh, to our blog apart from politics. So often blogs are much more narrowly focused in terms of political science or migration studies or, or so forth. And so that created a bit of a problem for us as to why someone would want to come back to our site every, every day or every other day. And so we started running blog series, uh, including the collaboration with Open Democracy uh, and Stewart. And we've also started a series on the US elections, presidential elections, uh, Middle East politics. Um, and then we also did a school series where Oxford academics uh, wrote a series of articles that tried to appeal to potential applicants to Oxford. And then the third, uh, again, is collaborations with other blogs to find out whether or not 
that's fruitful. Do we take readership from them? Do they take readership from us? Um, and, and also whether or not we wanted to cross post uh, blogs from elsewhere. Uh, so if someone had their own blog, could they also put it in politics as far as perhaps that would generate more traffic. Um, and then the last one was we really wanted to be a launching pad for, for someone's uh, project. So if they wanted to write about a particular uh, paper that they published, I was absolutely happy for it to, to only have a few readers on our site and then be reposted elsewhere. Because I think that's the, the general idea is to try and, and get as many uh, readers as possible. And if that's here or somewhere else, I, I don't see too much of a problem with that. So we've been able to grow from about one post a week to five, six, seven posts a week, to the point where actually I prefer to keep it a bit smaller to uh, keep the quality up. Um, Twitter has gone from 50 people to well over 2,000 now uh, with an active Twitter account. Uh, and still a large amount of our hits come from either Twitter or Facebook, uh, well over 50 or so. Um, and readership has quadrupled and continues to grow. <coughs> and for example, we had a piece that went up last week that was uh, retweeted hundreds of times and on hundreds of Facebook pages about the newest mentions. Um, so that's very encouraging. But I'd like to, to, to end. Uh, by posting some, some questions that perhaps will lead to conversation. Um, the first is what I mentioned at the beginning, why blog on the department website as opposed to setting up your own blog to discuss your own work and engage with others. And, and that's a question that I, I don't necessarily have an answer to. Um, I, think, I think it probably depends. But if you're a regular blogger, why would you want to blog on politics aspire to set up your own blog is, is an open question. Um, the second is how, how should a uh, political science or politics department focus their blog? Should they, should they do it thematically and say we're going to blog for six months about the, the election in Britain? Or should it be a, a continuous blog? Um, and then the, um, the last one, I, I mean, I, sorry, it's the penultimate one, is, is how can we try and integrate this with the academic output? So as opposed to academics commenting on current affairs, for example, uh, how can we boost the amount of blog posts about research papers going on, research projects? And it seems that there's some hesitancy to <coughs> talk too much about one's project in case someone steals your ideas or, or if it jeopardizes the chance of you getting some, some things published. Um, and attached to that is the fact that the ref doesn't recognize blogging. And a lot of people feel that there's an opportunity cost here. Uh, which I think is unfortunate because you can get a lot of good ideas through reaching out to other people. And it also, I think, is a good exercise to try to write about your project concisely, which you don't always have to do. Um, and, and lastly, is you know how do we how do we boost the conversation uh, between academic institutions and and other institutions? Uh, for example, it's not just a jump between academia and policy. We have other organizations like think tanks who, quite frankly, perhaps do a much better job than we do about. Um, you know, take the knowledge we produce and putting it out there in a digestible fashion, uh, in an attractive way. And they spend a lot of money on communications work that we, we don't do. Before I came here, I was at the World Bank, and we spent millions of dollars trying to boost their social media outreach and their blogging platform. So a lot of other organizations are thinking about this, and I think um, institutions like Oxford need to, uh, to continue to invest in it. And uh, because I think the potential is, uh, is there, it's a lot of Okay, well...